a 100,000-ton hunk of space rock, a meteorite weighing almost as much as two Titanics slamming to the surface of our planet. Imagine it's only 98 feet in diameter, about the length of a blue whale. Now, lastly, imagine it hits the surface of our planet, traveling at 28,600 miles per hour. The impact it would leave behind would look exactly like this. But this is nothing to what's come before, or what could still be coming. This is extreme science. The meteorite that impacted where we are now in Arizona did so 50,000 years ago with the force of 2.5 million tons of TNT, making a crater that is a quarter of a mile wide and 560 feet deep. Millions of tons of Earth rejected. Most of it melted due to the heat of the impact. But that wasn't all the damage. Oh, no, not at all. Let's go back to right before the meteorite hit. There were grassy hills, forests. Humans had yet to cross the Bering Strait. Ah, so peaceful. And then, all of a sudden, boom! Everything in the immediate vicinity is vaporized. Winds exceeding 880 feet per second blew across a three-mile area, and all vegetation in a 483-mile area was destroyed. All in all, the destruction would be enough to wipe out New York City. But the crazy thing is that this meteorite wasn't even all that big. The Chicks Lube impactor was thought to be at least six miles in diameter, and the crater it made could fit 117 of these Arizona ones in it. The Chicks Lube asteroid was responsible for causing the chain of events that led to the complete extinction of three quarters of all plants and animals on Earth 66 million years ago. Asteroids are terrifyingly powerful, but they're also incredibly interesting and slightly misunderstood. Now, we tend to use the terms meteors, comets, and asteroids interchangeably, but they are very different, even though they tend to come from the same place. An asteroid is a relatively small rocky body that orbits the sun. A comet is a relatively small object whose ice can vaporize from the heat of the sun, forming what we sometimes see as that trail of dust and gas behind it. A meteoroid is a small piece of comet or asteroid. A meteor is the light phenomena from when a meteoroid enters our atmosphere and vaporizes. And a meteorite is what survives coming through our atmosphere and subsequently crashes into Earth's surface. Scientists estimate that the kind of meteorite they did here in Arizona happens every 300 years. And actually, asteroids coming to our atmosphere is quite common. Every other week, a three-foot diameter asteroid comes to our Earth, hits the atmosphere, and then burns up. A car-sized one comes about once a year, breaks apart, and forms bolides, the technical term for fireballs. Really, any asteroid 82 feet diameter or less won't make it to the surface. Sometimes they come close, though, like in February 2013 in Russia. The giant fireball, or super bolide, was estimated to be 59 feet wide. Luckily, it broke apart before hitting our surface, but it was still able to blow out windows and injure over a thousand people. When I said an asteroid is relatively small, it can range in size from the 98-foot one here in Arizona to Ceres, a 600-mile-in-diameter asteroid that when it was first discovered in 1801 was thought to be a planet. It is now referred to as both a dwarf planet and an asteroid. And as far as we know, it is the largest asteroid in our solar system. NASA says an asteroid 1.5 miles in diameter or larger is enough to cause a catastrophic event on a global level. Think dinosaur extinction. In fact, you are more likely to die from an asteroid impact than from a shark attack. Hmm. Ugh. Blowing it up is exactly what you don't do. It would only create meteoroids, and we'd have no idea of knowing if these fragments would burn up in our atmosphere or not. The European Space Agency and NASA are both testing ways of changing an asteroid's course. Kinetic impact would alter the trajectory of an asteroid headed towards Earth by smashing something like a spacecraft into it. Or there is ARM, the Asteroid Redirect Mission, which would slowly move the asteroid using a spacecraft's gravitational pull and put it into lunar orbit. It would also allow us to study and potentially mine it. These programs and missions are still in early stages because we've yet to have a giant asteroid come close enough to our planet to warrant their use. You know, there's another interesting theory when it comes to asteroids, and that is that asteroids are like giant rocky seeds. It's called panspermia, and it is the idea that maybe life, on some microscopic level, traveled on board an asteroid and then was spread into a new home once its means of transport crashed into the planet. So maybe, just maybe, a meteorite may leave more of an impact on our landscape than a crater. 
It might just change what life comes out of it. I'm Jake, and I'll see you next time on Extreme Science.